We thank you because we come in your presence not wanting as one that sucks on milk. We come in your presence as children of God that have matured and designed the sincere meat of your word. We're ready to be sent just as you sent your son Jesus into the earth and then he sent out and dispersed the 12 and they went out two by two. Father, we're ready for our two by two assignment. We're ready to be changed and we're ready to change. Because I firmly believe the revelation that you have given us, Father, and that is when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. And so tonight, teach us in the spirit because we don't want to be destroyed because we are ignorant of Satan's devices. So help us to comprehend that which is in the super realm. Help us to comprehend that which is in the super realm light. Help us to see what we have never been seen. Help us to understand what has never been understood. And Father, I ask this in your name because I read this a few days ago in the newspaper that on Monday father there's going to be a spaceship that's going to go out and hit a comet in the atmosphere that sits out hundreds of thousands of miles into space the newspaper said that it would leave a cradle about 23 stories high, about 100 feet wide, as long as a football field. And it will affect change in the galaxies. And I'm asking you in the spirit realm to do that with us tonight. That you will allow the wisdom that you are about to impart into us to collide with the thing that Satan has fixed in the galaxy that we will bring about change in Jesus mighty name amen and amen let the people of God say amen, amen. Dr. Trim many of you have if you have not met her and you've just joined us in the summit and tonight is your first night in the summit I'd like to uh, you don't do sign language good, so why don't you just come and tell me? Because all that. <laughs> the plant is blocking my face. Move the plant. Y'all just be sending the wrong. Well, what y'all sitting over there for? Because if y'all are supposed to be the people that's assisting me, and she my secretary, why y'all letting her throw me all this? I keep telling y'all, stay in y'all lane. Everybody be trying to be in somebody else's grave. Anything I need to know, y'all tell me. Y'all sitting over there getting God. I done told y'all about that. So y if you can't take no rebuke, then don't travel with nobody, amen? Because that's what some of y'all do to some people that y'all travel with. You be all off in the spirit. <laughs> that ain't for you. <laughs> you travel with somebody, I tell them, you better not fall out. Oh no, loud speaking in tongues. I brought you here to help, not to get a deposit. Get on up. You got folk traveling with you and they just all, how this? Woo! This is just so powerful. No, I need a drink of water. This is not powerful right now for you. I need something to drink. I'm over here about to faint from thirst and you over here telling me how powerful stuff is. <laughs> Come on, I gotta teach all the way around the corner. Come on, somebody said that's good right there. Come on, somebody get excited right there. Telling you, telling you, we got those are the little things that we learn as we go. Amen. Learn how to get back. How many people that we got in here that travel with people in ministry? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Say, Amen. You got to learn how to get back. Some of y'all be trying to get your little ministry all off the ground and all that kind of stuff. Get down. Touch your neighbor and say, get down low, get back. Because when you travel with people, they're supposed to see you. They ain't supposed to hear you. you. You're supposed to serve so quiet that people think you invisible. They look around, don't even know how that glass of juice got on the table. Because you got to know timing. You got to know how to slip in and put it down and disappear. And not be all off in it. You, they right in the middle of a conversation. And you tell them, I do you want some water? Don't break the flow. Be sensitive. 
Go somewhere and sit down. Give me the juice. We don't want to see you. We don't want to hear from you. This is your season to serve. Oh, I'm ministering right now. Somebody said, but when we going to get to talking about what affects the kingdom, this right here affects the kingdom. Wanna be too soon. Right, y'all ain't saying that. I don't know, Dr. Trim. I think they 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 try to think I'm, but you know it's the truth, y'all. Because people don't teach people how to serve no more. And you gotta be taught how to serve. Don't be giving nobody no cards when you with somebody. You not there to get your connection on. Oh God, okay. You there to serve and you there to make sure that the man and the woman of God is being served properly. And how do you know when you've been called to that job because you are serving to everybody. You just don't get your lady juice and the other lady sitting there about to die of cotton mouth and you act like you don't see her. When you a daughter, you a daughter to any mother. Lord, I just preach right there. But anyway, we're going to we're going to begin this. We're going to begin this, and they know that I they know that I love them. But I tell them all the time when I rebuke you, you ain't got five you five minutes to have an attitude. That's because I'm gonna give you that because I know it's gonna hurt you. But after that five minutes, you done got over into rebellion then, and then I'm gonna come back with a bigger butcher knife. Amen. Because you got to know how to take a cut and swallow that thing and choke that thing and digest that thing and keep on serving. Don't be slamming no glass down after you done took a rebuke and talking about it ain't fair. You don't judge when it's fair. That's not the place where you judge whether or not your mentor did what was right or what was wrong. That's the place that you judge where you went wrong. I'm just trying to see if I'm going to get some amens from my, from my pulpit here. Because you don't want to turn out people and they don't understand the power of their job and you got to teach them their grade and the reason why you just saw me do that is because when you got people that coming into levels and and, and, you, and your new level is the juice girl and the water girl and i know there's a preach down in you but it ain't time yet come on somebody then you have to you have to show them how to serve juice and be faithful to juice because if I see you keep messing up juice, you will mess up a preach somewhere. If you can't get juice right, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. If you can't get juice right, then you can't get prophesying right. If you mess up how to prepare some juice after you've been traveling with me for six months, then you're going to mess up a word. I got to make sure you got juice right. Then I got to make sure you got clothes right. Then I got to make sure you got close your mouth right. Then I got to make sure you got sit down right. Then I got to make sure that your clothes ain't too sexy and you ain't too provocative because some of y'all don't know what y'all want to be. You say you a called woman of God. You can't be tying your breasts all up and, and got everything showing. This is not the hour to show your shape. This is the hour for you to present yourself as a woman of God. God. Pull your clothes down. Know where you're going. No timings and seasons. That ain't the place to wear flip flops. I'm not here. Y'all wear the wrong thing at the wrong time. This ain't the playground. This ain't the ball game. I see too many of y'all coming to church with thong shoes on and all. Know where you are. If you don't ever know your audience, you will mess yourself up everywhere you go. If you wear an afro, then it ain't time to wear your afro when you get ready to go sit on the TV with Benny Hinn. You got too many people talking about, I just want to be myself. Be yourself at home. Because the scripture said that I must become all things to all men that I may what? Okay, I just talked right there, so sit down. We didn't call you now. We already into the summit. We're already into it. We into it already. Because some of you all have powerful ministries out there, but you don't know when. Somebody invites you somewhere and you got on something crazy. Maybe I can look at what in the depth. We can't even hear God for seeing what is that you got all tied up around yourself. If you, and you wear pants, don't be wearing your slacks so tight so we can see all of your stuff and panty lines. And, and you want to minister and all your junk all bunched all up the in here and you looking all nasty and stuff that ain't god that ain't cute can i can, can i can, can i can, can i just set that part straight first 
Excuse me, brothers, but we all grown. You gotta learn how to cover up your nipples and get your stuff together. Walking around here with no underwear on, and I can see your bra through your blouse and, and all that crazy foolishness. I can see your panty lines. And you talking about you a woman of God and you ready to go to the nation. No, you ready to go to the underwear store and get you some foundation first. Then you go to the nations. All right. All right. You ain't got to wear the tightest pants in the world. Come on, somebody. And some of y'all wear too many pants. You wear pants all the time. Stop all that dooting and walking like a boy and got your shoulders all raised up and pimping and can't. Why are you pimping? You a girl. Why you got to preach and pimp? Why you gotta slap your <laughs> Close your legs up and look like a lady. Stand like a woman, talk like a woman. Come on, somebody. Your femininity is necessary for where God's trying to take you. If they wanted a man, they would have invited a man. They invited a woman, so don't go looking like a man. It's all right to wear a little cute haircuts, but some of y'all cut it too short. Y'all look. Let your hair grow a little bit so we can know which way you going. That's all right. Don't confuse us about that because we're confused enough. The world is confused. The church is confused. And it's time for somebody to make the decision to mature enough to bring some kind of character and identification back to the church. I'm not hearing y'all say that. We trying too hard to look like the world. Now let's talk about what changes governments and kingdoms and <laughs> legislatures. Now that we got your underwear right, maybe we can talk to you. Got your clothes on you correct. Come on. That's what the woman of God is getting us ready for. She was talking to me about some things in the back and all of what I do is necessary. Cannot be the same Juanita Bynum I was 10 years ago. And not when the Lord is preparing me to go before kings and queens. I have to change my appearance. Yep. Ain't nothing wrong with what I got. Honey, ain't nobody going to change me. And that's all right because you're going to stay right there in Uncle Booker's church preaching to his 30 people. With a broke down guitar. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to look like where you trying to go. Come on, somebody. My daddy always told me, if you ain't got no money, honey, create an illusion. Look like you know where you're going. Look like you got something. Amen, somebody. Am I helping anybody? All oh, y'all back in the back. Am I helping you today? You got to ask yourself about the timing of the Lord. When you're getting ready to get dressed and you know you're getting ready to go into the presence of certain people, you have to ask yourself, is this appropriate for the season and the time? And if you don't know timing, you can be the greatest person in the world. You can have the greatest prophetic gift on your life that the world has ever seen. But if you don't know timing and you don't know posture and you don't know poise and you don't know dignity and you don't have class, you're not going very far. Amen. Well, the first question, Dr. Chambers. Dr. Chambers looking at me like... She tells me that I crack her up. This is, this is she, she's my sister. The first question that I would like to ask you, Dr. Trim, is um, we were talking about kingdom issues. And I want to know, first of all, what is the true purpose of the church? And how does the church find its relevance? How do we come into compliance to the point that we we know that we are not of this world and we know that to a certain extent in the spirit realm we do work we're supposed to be working against the kingdom of darkness but what we need to know is how do we how do we uh, prophetically work against the kingdom of darkness but at the same time come into an alliance where we don't end up destroying in the spirit what we're going to need later to accomplish where we're going. Can you explain that to yes. us? Yes. Um, the church, firstly, is a God idea. We have to understand that it has nothing to do with denominations. 
Number two, we have to understand that the church has never been, will never be, a religious institution. The church is, from a kingdom perspective, the educational institution of the kingdom of heaven. We have to understand that we go through socialization and education in the world system. Right. Once you're born again, the Bible says that we are translated or trans new migrated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And when we're born again, we're born again as babes in Christ. And so when, we're, when we come into the church, actually what God does is turn us right side up. Because the Bible says that if we are translated from the kingdom of darkness, to the kingdom of light that simply means that a person is walking in this world upside down it's like walking on your head so once you once you come into the kingdom he puts you back on your feet and then he retrains you and he re-educates you so that you can walk out God's original plan and purpose in the earth realm for man. The earth was never created for spirits. That means that if there are any kinds of spiritual activities that are going on in the earth realm, they go, they go on illegally. And so there's a lot of illegal activities that are going on through falling angels. The Bible talks about in the book of Revelation that there was war in the heavenlies and that Satan was thrown down to the earth and there was a woe that went on uh, out from the heavens onto the earth realm. The word woe means judgment. Mm -hmm. The Bible also says in, according to Genesis chapter 6 that these demonic spirits cohabited with human beings and when they cohabited with human beings they created a population explosion. With the population explo explosion these giants came into the land. That means that there was a, a perversion in the social realm where, where in the families uh, people would be produced that were, were being produced genetically through uh, perversions. And wow. so God, God instituted the church, number one, to, to show man and to teach man his original plan and purpose for man here in the earth realm. The book of Psalm 115 says that God is the God of the heavens, but he has given man the earth to rule. The Bible said in the book of Genesis that God has given man dominion over the earth realm. Dominion is not someone giving you rights. Dominion is the right that God gives us to rule here in the earth realm. So we already so have it. We already have it. And what happens was it snatched away because this uh, d the dimension that we live in, the three-dimensional world, is ruled by principalities and powers. They're here illegally because the Bible said that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, not of the earth. The Bible also indicates that Jesus Christ is king of kings and lords of lords wait so the so so wait 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 so then every demonic spirit that is operating around tormenting uh, uh, uh distressing us all of the stuff that we go through they were never supposed to be in the earth realm never they are the power and the prince of the air so when they come to the earth realm they are here illegally which it's means illegally. we have the right to rebuke them and they have to go they have to go. What happens is the Bible said that Christ is the head of the church in Ephesians, Christ is the head of the church. Therefore, if God has put all things under his feet, that means that the foot represents authority. It represents the enforcement of laws. And if the, the, the principalities and powers are placed under the foot of Jesus, if he is the head and the church is his body, that means that technically speaking, we have dominion over every principality and power because that would place the powers of darkness darkness under our feet wow. and so our issue is an issue of position and if we can understand our position the Bible said that as long as we are in Christ Jesus we should be seeking those things which are above in another dimension than those things which are beneath that means that we have to deal with the whole issue of dimensions the Bible indicates uh, uh, and as well as scientists that we live in a three-dimensional world so if we live in a three-dimensional world scientists has indicated that there is something called a brain that locks the uh, locks us in the atmosphere so as we're sp spinning around the universe we don't get through thrown off of the earth and so there's something that is stronger in the earth realm than gravity it's called the magnetic pool out of which you get the north pole and the south pole I want to go somewhere with this north pole and south pole so that means that we are locked here in the earth realm through our physical bodies but the spirit is what keeps us from being locked into this third dimension. After the third dimension, you have a fourth, which is the first heaven, which is the atmospheric heaven. You have a, uh, the fifth dimension, which is the second heaven, which is the intergalactic.
and then which all with all the stars and the planets and the galaxy and then you get into the third heaven and if you count that gives us six dimensions did y'all get that did y'all get that did y'all get that no don't shake your head yeah because some of y'all sitting here and you ain't just you ain't move with your pencil okay let's back up get your pencil out because you be the main one talking about, who just pray for me? I'm just going through so much. No, the dimensions, you have authority. Satan is under your feet. He is here illegally. He got his hands on your stuff and should not have his hands on your stuff. And you're going to learn how to rule in all six dimensions. Now get your pen out and, do, and say that one more time. How many dimensions? Are you all understanding what we're trying to do here? Is, is everybody understand what I'm trying? I'm trying to give you the knowledge that you need so we can stop flubbing up at this. So we can stop being religious and fighting and beating yes, against the yes, air. And yes. we don't know. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I bind you, devil. Come out. Come out from where? Which dimension? Where are you coming from? Where are you hiding? Yeah. Where are you trying to place yourself? Are you hearing this? So let's go again. How many? Okay. So, so you, you, I, I took you to the sixth dimension, yes. so which the is the first, dimension? second, we live in a three-dimensional world. Right. So when you move up, you go into the heavens. In the heavens. So you have the first heaven and the second heaven and the third heaven that makes six dimensions. Because okay. a lot of people talk about moving into different dimensions, but they don't explain it. Right. So that's the dimensions. Now, the Bible said that if we then we would be risen with Christ, and that means that we are risen, not only risen, we are seated in heavenly places. Now... There's a difference between standing and seating. I'm British American. And so before I became an American, I was British. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a queen, which is sovereign rule. So I understand about authority. Now, if you see a picture of the queen, what you see is her husband always standing and you see her sitting. She's sitting because that's her official position as a sovereign rule. That means that her husband is not ranked in her category. Although he's standing, he, she's sitting. So when, the, when Jesus went into the heavens, the Bible said he did not stand, but he sat. That means he is in an official rulership, sovereign position right now over the heavens and over the earth and over every single dimension. The Bible said that we are in Christ Jesus. That means that all of the authority that is in Christ Jesus is vested in us here in the earth realm. Mm. That's why when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name. The other, the other issue is when you get to the sixth, when you get to the, uh, sixth dimension, then you're moving into God. You're moving into the God realm. The Bible said, God says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. In other words, I never stop beginning and I never stop ending. It's, it's cyclic. In other words, you can never really know God because he continues to begin and he continues to end. And so Paul, when he was speaking to the Ephesus church, in fact, the, the book of Ephesians is actually like the first book of the Bible because God takes Paul into his mind. Mm -hmm. before the foundations of the world yes yes, yes so he yes. has this revelation yes, and yes. as he has this revelation he addresses the church and he says i want to commend you into the love of god which is which has height and breadth and width and depth that means that once you move into the dimensions of god you move into the tenth dimension which is a number of authority and law because you're moving into that dimension. Once you move into that dimension, then you begin to legislate here on this earth realm. This is where you get into Psalm 82. The Bible said, have not I called you gods? And I know a lot of people get it mixed up, but it simply means my earthly representative. It's wow. like, it's like um, the Supreme Court, they cannot try every case. And so they have circuit courts all around the United States. And so we're like the little court system here in the earth realm. We are, we are, we don't, we don't, we don't create legislation. We enact it and enforce it because it comes from the Supreme God, every piece of legislation. And so if there are illegal laws, remember in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter, uh, Daniel chapter seven, verse 25, the Bible said that when Satan moves in the earth realm, he's going to attempt to change laws and times. Now, 
the Bible said in the book of Job, you shall decree a thing yes. and it shall be established. This is where you get into a spiritual authority. To decree a thing means to legislate it. It means to enforce it in the earth realm. Simply put, the, the enemy wants to release words into the atmosphere called curses. And when he releases it into the atmosphere, we have the legitimate power to veto it. We, we, we hold the trump card. The Bible said whatever you bound on earth, you bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. Let me give you the correct interpretation. This is legal languages. The legal language simply means that we are God's representative here in this earth realm, and whatever we allow to occur in the earth realm, God allows it. Wow. And whatever we, we allow in the realm of the spirit, God allows it. But whatever we bind, whatever we disallow in the earth realm, God disallows it. In other words, what we say yes to, God says yes to. Why? Because the Bible said he created the earth in six days. But on the seventh day, he rested. And he gave man a sevenfold mandate. He said to mankind, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion, enjoy a healthy lifestyle, and be productive. He never told men, get a job. He said, work. Work is different from a job. Work is attached to purpose. Work is attached to assignment. And work is attached to potential. That's why Jesus said, I must work the works of him while it is yet day. He didn't get a job. He did the work of the ministry. And so the church is here and a mandate is a precursor to a mindset. Therefore, if God said that you should do something, he gives you the mindset. So the, 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 the great commission is misunderstood. The Bible said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We have to clarify what the gospel is. The gospel is not Jesus saying. If you just preach the message of Jesus saved Jesus said I am the door that means that you're gonna get people to the door you'll preach at the door you'll pay your tithes at the door and you're gonna die at the door but if someone said I'm gonna give you the keys to a kingdom I'm gonna be mad if all I get is a door I want to know what the kingdom is the kingdom here in the earth realm is its systems systems the Bible said go into the world the world that word world comes from a Greek word cosmos psalm 24 verse 1 said the earth is the lord's the fullness the earth, the world and they that dwell therein that means that the earth and the world cannot be the same thing the earth is the terra firma which you put your feet on but the world is the system that drives the progress of humanity now the systems are 12 fold 12 is a number of kingdom authority you've got the sovereign you got a sovereign kingdom. Now, systems operate in kingdoms. The Bible said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. That means when you go into kingdom initiatives, the church then has to not only be significant, but find relevance. How do you find relevance? You only find relevance once you understand the kingdom. The kingdom of God is different from the kingdoms of this world. When Satan tempted Jesus, based on his spiritual authority, he tried to seduce him and said I'll give you his third his third temptation I'll give you the kingdoms of this world now Jesus said look the first thing is I'm going to serve God the second thing I'm going to worship him these are two words the same word he's using them interchangeably one means that I'm going to honor him with my heart the next thing is I'm going to use everything that is about me to service God it has the it has the connotation of a king priest it has the connotation of king priest. And so Jesus knew that the kingdoms were already his. The problem with the church is we are going to the world to give us what we already have. God has already given the church dominion over systems. We don't have to write for, to any government to underwrite any church program. Why? The kingdoms of this world belong to us. Now, there are, there, are, there are eight kingdoms. Number one, there's the sovereign kingdom. The sovereign kingdom works in rank and in order. This is where you get matrons and mantles, okay? This is where uh, the five-fold ministry gifts works in ranks and in order, and each one of the five-fold ministry gifts become the tactic of the kingdom and then we were mantles each one of us our mantles determines number one the angelic host 
that reinforces us. Number two, it is the shrouding upon our flesh that hides the flesh in the realm of the spirit so that when people see us, they don't see our characteristics, but they see the characteristics of Christ. Hence, there's a necessity to understand the reason why the prophetic is important in the church. The prophetic is not only the unction to function, it is a mantle that God puts upon us and clothes us in that when we move through the systems of the universe, we become like gravitons. Now, when you move in dimensions in, in the intergalactic realm, the dimensions change. They're kind of funny. Some of them move in circles. Some of them move in squares. They have all kinds of different shapes. That's why when it comes to science, they use mathematical formula to explain the unexplainable. And when they use mathematical formula in uh, the turn of the century in MIT, they discovered something called a graviton. And I want to explain this so that we can understand faith. And then I'm going to go back to the whole issue of the church. A graviton is mathematically understood as something that has a trajectory that moves into a straight line. In other words, if it starts here and it ends up there, it has to move in a straight line. It's called a graviton. So scientists couldn't understand in, the, in, the, in these different dimensions how it is if the dimensions make curves and turns, how it is that this, this graviton still moves in a straight line. And then they discovered that the graviton does not adjust to the dimensions, but the dimensions adjust to the graviton. This is where faith comes in. Faith is like God shooting something from out of the 10th dimension into your mind, downloads it as a vision or purpose or an assignment or a mission in the earth realm. And he says, you are here and I want to take you there. And because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, he moves you in a straight line towards destiny and purpose. That means that circumstances and situations have no effect on you, but you affect circumstances and situations so that when you get into situation situations necessarily adjust to accommodate your vision your purpose your anointing you that means you don't have to make adjustment the world has to adjust to accommodate you that's why when Elijah came into the earth realm and he got on top of the mountain and all the uh, uh, demonically possessed high priests were there and they had principalities that were supported them all he had to do is say God I'm coming as your servant prove to these individuals who I am give us an open heaven the Bible said when the heavens opened, fire came down from heaven it slew 850 demonically possessed individuals people don't understand how much power this man had he had so much power his mental his mental his mantle was so powerful that when Elijah said, I want that mantle, El Elijah said, well, if you see me when you go, you can have it. That means that he had to be on a 24-hour spiritual surveillance. It meant when Elijah went to sleep, he had to be awake. It meant if Elijah had to go to the bathroom, he better have a peephole because he did not know the timing of the Lord. And so what happened was when the mantle was getting ready to be released, God opened the eye of his mentore, opened the eye of his student. And when his eyes was open, he saw something in the spirit realm. And what he saw in the spirit realm, he saw what his mentor represented. The power was not in the cloak. The power is what was in the anointing that was upon the man's life. This man was so powerful. The Bible indicated that he had legions of angels that supported him in ministry. In other words, what people see is you, evangelist, a prophet is by them. But what they don't see is the cauldron of angels that have been summoned to support you. There are angelic beings that have your DNA. The Bible said that when Rhoda was interceding for Peter, Peter was apostolic. There was an angel that was released. One angel, one angel, one angel. In the book of Isaiah chapter 37, the Bible said one angel has the power to destroy. 185,000 men. Jesus in his kingdom authority stood up and they said, who do you think you are? He said, if I wanted to, I would summon 12 legions of angels. This is the mantle that was upon the head of Jesus. What does that 
that mean if Jesus Christ is the head of the church? That means the minimum we have fighting for us in the realm of the spirit is 12 legions. That's the minimum. What does that mean? It simply means this. I'm going to tell you what it means. If one, one, one angel has the power to destroy 185 thousand men that's an entire city one angel can destroy an entire city 12 legions that means a legion is 6,000 angels so that's 6,000 times 12 that's 72,000 multiply it by the power of an angelic force that's 185,000 times 72,000 that puts us in billions that's why the Bible says you don't have to fear as a prophet because they may see you as one woman but what they don't see is the angelic host that is backing you up that's why Paul said though I speak with tongues of man and of angels what was he talking about he said I have a tongue that summons angels that's why I tell people don't mess with a man or a woman of God you don't know the power that they have in the realm of the spirit listen this a mental a mental is not just the unction to function, but the mental is all the resources that God gives you in every dimension to fulfill your mission and your purpose here in the earth realm. That takes me back to the question of the church. <clears throat> the church is here <clears throat> to affect and to enforce and to propagate and preach the gospel of the kingdom to the world, not the earth, not the terra firma, but to the world. Now, the, 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 the earth is, if, the, if this is the earth, then, then the world has to be suspended just above the earth. It's the spirit realm. It's the cosmos. It, it's the spirit world. It's the world in the spirit. And I'm going to break it down to make it very, very simple. <sighs> the Bible said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So that means that the church is to bring the kingdoms back into divine alignment, right? There are eight kingdoms. There's the sovereign kingdom. You have three rankings in that kingdom. You've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is the highest ranking. Under him is God the Son. And under the Son is the Holy Spirit. Though they be equal in essence and nature, they are different in assignments. This is what we don't understand. And so submission becomes easy because there's a difference in assignment. That's one, that's the sovereign. You drop down a little lower and you get the angelic kingdom. This is where angels, and it's divided into the diabolical and the divine. They work in rank and in order. So in the divine, let me talk about the divine, you have archangels. You have seraphims, you have cherubims, you have uh, spirit beings. These are all, they all have assignments. The seraphims have uh, eight wings, eight eyes. Uh, they're kind of scary. So they got eyes on their wings and they got feet and, and they run around. Ezekiel said, I saw these strange beings and they moved in circles and then they had wheels that were turning. And this is him trying to describe what this angelic beings are like. So you've got all these angelic beings. Every angel has an assignment. For instance, you have angels that measure territories. The Bible said in the book of Zechariah that he saw, God gave him a vision in the book of Zechariah. One of the visions said that there was an angel that was just measuring territory and he kept measuring and he, he it confused him and I asked God why do they keep measuring because the because and then God said every time you gain territory in the realm of the spirit Satan seeks to take the territory from you so these angelic beings go to measure the territories so that they can figure out whether or not there is diabolical encroachment if it is you can they, they can communicate back to you and you can go into warfare to regain territories that you have lost. Now, this is what happened with Daniel. Israel had been given dominion over the world and Babylon came in and stole their dominion. And so Daniel began to pray and fast. And then the Bible said that he began to decree because he heard the decree of the watchers 
Who are these watchers? Just like you have prophetic intercessors, you have angels that are assigned in the realm of the spirit also. So you have these angelic hosts in the realm of the spirit. And I'm going to stop there because I could go on and on. But I want to explain the... Okay. No, no, no. no. The reason why you have to finish that is because... Are you all getting this? The reason why you have to... You, you, you really have to finish this whole angelic thing is because we need to understand when we go into spiritual warfare or when we're being attacked is there anybody with me here when we're being attacked who is fighting for us and who can we call to assist us because they're being called to assist us we have the power to call them to assist us we don't want to be calling on michael the warren angel when we should be calling on a, another angel that's supposed to measure to see if the devil is cheating on our territory that's what you call praying amiss did I just help somebody right there? That's what you call praying the wrong thing at the wrong time. So we need to okay. understand that. You're dropping down. This, this will be the next um, kingdom. That means that we're above this kingdom because we're in Christ Jesus. So that means if you're fighting spiritual battles, you don't fight this way. You fight that way. You fight down. Because he's under your feet. Unless you have feet on top of your head. And I don't know anybody with feet growing out of their head. And so you, you fight down. He, he cannot give you a headache. You give him a headache. There, that's the difference. And so what, what happens in, in, in that dimension, you have angelic beings that work in rank and in order. And so this is where you get spiritual protocol. When it comes to spiritual protocol, uh, a high-ranking principality cannot touch a human being that's low-ranking. They do not, it's legalities, it's technicalities, and they can, they have to move in protocol. I'll prove it to you. Jesus goes into a city, and there were territorial demons, and they possessed this man. He was high ranking, kept an entire city, just terrified, terrified a city. Jesus comes in, and they, these were not principalities. And so as soon as Jesus walks in, they say, listen, don't, don't, don't torment us. Why did they say it? Because he outranked all these little demons, and so they had to submit. Then they worshiped him, and then begged him. They requested of him, could you please send us? That means that, for all intents and purposes, many of us that are here outrank these low-level demonic spirits. We outrank them. So they need to ask us permission. Let me give an example. When the Lord was giving me an, ex uh, an under understanding of where I was ranking and, and training me in this thing, I used to have witches that uh, astral projected either in my home or in my car. And then God showed me, these, these, these people don't have any authority. So I used to say, by whose authority are you here? Then I threatened them. If you astral project one more time, I'll keep you out of your bodies. They never came back. I never had those kinds of visitation. Why? Because ignorance keeps us in bondage. And one of the most powerful tools that the enemy uses against us is ignorance. So I, I don't have, the Bible said the thing that Job feared came upon him. Fear gives open doors to the enemy. He outranked many, Job was powerful in his day, but fear opened up doors. And so fear is not the opposite of faith, unbelief is the antithesis of, of faith. So fear means that you are ignorant in a certain area and many of us are ignorant concerning the legalities of the enemy. So this, going back into that dimension, they, everything works in rank and in order. And so you, you've got uh, these archangels, these were, there were three of them. There was a Lucifer, there was Michael, and there's Gabriel. Now, when, when God sent a message to Mary, he said, Gabriel, one of the reasons was, in, in, although she was a virgin, she ranked very high. She did not know it. She did not know her ranking. And so God had to send a high-ranking archangel to send a message. This is what you call protocol. And so when protocol is established in the heavens, it has to be established in the earth realm. And so, so we get mixed up because we know people by the flesh, but we don't know people by the spirit. That, that means that people that are high ranking cannot afford to mingle with everybody because you can lose your influence because people can drag you in the wrong direction. 
And so th this, this is why we have to learn about seeds, planting seeds. People usually give. Go back to that. Okay. Why can't people who the Lord is elevating you in a certain realm on the spirit really bring that home as to why there must become a time and a season of, of separation? Because it has to do with protocol. You see, a person that's high ranking has to summons another person to that level. You cannot go there by yourself. Why? Because protocol simply means you have, you have safe transit into another dimension. In order to communicate with a person on a lower level, either they have to come up to your level or you have to go down to their level. It's the whole issue of Moses. Moses' father-in-law said, Moses, you cannot keep doing this. You are on one dimension getting strategies and then you're coming all the way down and trying to be a tactician. Stay up on the mountain, hold your hands up, send Joshua down and fight with these little demons. You are, you are too important to, why? because it, it works by structure. If you're a strategist and you come down to be a tactician, you cross structure. The structure starts shaking and automatically the enemy has the right to destroy ministries, to destroy churches, to destroy denominations. And so the Moseses have to stay, that, listen, that is why when Saul came in, to the presence of, 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 of Samuel, he had to be summoned to the high place and he was only there for a short while and then he had to go. It was because Samuel's ranking was so high in the realm of the spirit. That's why Samuel looked strange. He wasn't strange. He was operating from another dimension. Uh, that's a Selah. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just bring it all the way down. And then I'm going to finish my answer to about, about the church. <laughs> it works in rank. If, if you don't understand this, you will not understand spiritual protocol. And the enemy will always have legal access in your life. You could pray. You could fast. You could speak in tongues. You could throw holy oil, holy water, Crisco, anything you want over yourself. It will not have any effect in the realm of the spirit. Ignorance is the strongest tool against believers. Not demons, not principalities, ignorance. So you, you have these dimensions. This, this is the next dimension, the angelic. And so, so in the di diabolical, you have Satan. He has to be the head because he was one of the archangels. His, his anointing is perverted, but he still operates in the, in, the, in the gifts and the missions, but it's very perverted, okay? He was over the economic system here in the earth realm. People don't know that. That's why when it comes to offering, have you ever noticed in a service how we could shout and jump when the singers are singing and the preacher is preaching, but mention that one word, offering. There's a spirit that hits the atmosphere you see, and it, it changes your perception. A hundred dollars is large in an offering. But when you go out to Sex Fifth Avenue, a hundred dollars can't buy you nothing. Just about buy you. It, 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 it is because of the prince of the power over the ear also wants to control the economics. So that means that technically speaking, people who are in secular jobs who don't understand that their ministry is in the workplace so that there is no difference between sacred and secular that means unless they understand their assignment in the workplace for six days the enemy pimps them they're guilty of spiritual prostitution because they take their gifts they take their anointings they take their talents and they take their ability and they give it to another kingdom and then they give God leftovers on Sunday and then they, they, they begrudge God of his tithe and so that means we're tired on Sunday, we say this is a sacrifice, and then we go back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we give the world the best of what we have. That means our intellectual property is driving the economies of this world. We are not beggars, we are kings. We legislate, we don't beg for anything. That means that unless we get the whole issue of kingdom economics right, we will never fulfill our mission here in the earth realm. Okay. Let me go back up to these dimensions and then come back down. 
when you drop, you, you have principality, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness, and heavenly places. This, this is how it works, ranking in order. The lower ones, and then they move up to the top ones. Then you drop down to another dimension, prophetess. You go from the sovereign to the angelic. Then you've got another dimension, which is the intergalactic. The intergalactic realm is where the, where the, where the, where the sun and moon rule, because they rule in ranking in order. The sun outranks the moon. So in, even intergalactically, there is order. There are stars that submit to the suns and the moon. Every galaxy has their own sun and moon, and they are the greater and the lesser light. Then you drop down further, and you got the kingdom. There's another kingdom, which is called the animal kingdom. Now, in the animal kingdom, the animal kingdom works in rank and in order. You have the water kingdom, you have the earth kingdom, and then you have the sky kingdom, the kingdom which, which is the atmosphere. The eagle is the king of the sky. It is the highest ranking bird that's why God said you shall mount up as wings as an eagle that's a prophetic uh, word then you have the lion which is the highest ranking animal in the earth realm that's why Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah then you drop down to the highest ranking in the water world which happens to be the whale so everything in every kingdom works by rank and order then you go to the planet kingdom you go to the planet kingdom after you go to the planet kingdom Kingdom, then you go to the atomic kingdom. That's where you have fuel. That's where you have jewels. That's where you have um, oil, petroleum. That's where that's that's that kingdom. And everything like the the highest jam is the diamond. And so that works in rank and in order as well. Then you drop down to the subatomic kingdom. This is where you get viruses and and prions and gravitons and singular cell cellular things. They work in rank and in order too. We know about pre prions because they're mad cow disease. It's a prion. Are you with me? It's single cell. Are you with me? So these are single cell. They all re work in rank and in order. But there is another kingdom and that's the kingdom of man. Now when you get to the kingdom of man, God says to man in this kingdom, I give you authority over every kingdom except my sovereign kingdom. That means, technically speaking, the church has authority over the animal kingdom, the church has authority over the plant kingdom, the church has authority over the atomic kingdom, the church has authority over the subatomic kingdom. I can prove it scripturally. Number one, intergalactic kingdom. This is where Joshua, in his mental, he was fighting a battle and it looked like he was losing and he stood up and he said, Son! stand still what was he doing he was affecting his authority over the intergalactic kingdom not only did the sun stand still but if the sun only stood still but mars and jupiter kept on moving it would have caused an atomic explosion so when he said sun he brought order to every other galaxy that mean the moon stood still the sun stood still mars stood still jupiter stood still saturn stood still and they didn't move until Joshua said to move let me prove it again here is Elijah he, he's got authority over the animal kingdom he's got authority over nature nature he goes out and they begin to say you don't have any prophetic authority nobody is covering you you're a bald head he said all right I'll prove to you the mental that I have over you beer come out of the what animal kingdom and a beer came out and it devoured the man then he said listen I need to get the axe but I'm not gonna get my hair wet so he said water change your molecular structure and the axe that was heavier than the water water became heavier than the axe and the axe floated up he had authority over nation not only that but you see Jesus Jesus said I don't feel like rowing so the waters congealed and he walked on water he had authority over that we see even uh, Moses with his mantle it's a prophetic mantle Moses said there's got to be a way out God said there is a way out activate your apostolic anointing use your stick so when he stretched forth his stick there was a prophetic channel that opened up and what God gave as deliverance to the children of God of, of God became the judgment of the enemy there are dimensions in in the prophetic there are portals prophetic portals 
There are prophetic doors. There are prophetic windows. There are prophetic paths. Job knew about paths. He was able to trouble a path that took him into great economic wealth. And, 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 and uh, he said, listen, I, I troubled in these paths. And God showed me by prophetic revelation where the gold was and where the diamond was. And he then started his diamond and gold mining business. The Bible said that Adam had no education. Are you with me? He didn't have no degree. Nobody taught him ABCs, one to three. He didn't know anything. But when God said be fruitful, the word fruitfulness means to, to grow from within. Multiply means to augment what you got. It means to get where you're going to go a whole lot further. He said be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Re means to restore it back to its original state. Plenish means wealth, luxury, and extravagant. He had a mindset of a billionaire. In other words, don't ask me for money. You create money yourself. Listen to me carefully. There's no difference between a tree and a dollar bill except the process in between. What we don't understand is why God is processing you. He's going to change your value here in the earth realm. The church is considered salt and light. Salt is not just for food. People misunderstand what salt is. Salt means that there is an agent that sustains communities. What is the agent that sustains community? Morality and ethics. Therefore, as long as the church is in a community, that means crime has to go down. Hallelujah. That means shooting has to go down. That means money laundering has to go down. That means raping has to go down. That means gang banging has to go down. As soon as the church comes in an area, the church becomes the panacea of the problems, not government. Why? The church is God's official government here in this earth realm. We legislate. We change. We be, that's what happened to Daniel. They said, Daniel, we're changing the legislation. Daniel said, go ahead on. He went into his prayer closet and he vetoed it. When he vetoed it, the book, listen to me, the book, I love this, the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel said this, that because he was so powerful, the enemy wants to change laws and he wants to change timing. Not season, timing. The reason why the Bible said in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, to everything there is a season and a purpose, a time for every purpose. So he wants to move you out of purpose. You see, purpose is the only thing that gives you success and prosperity in the earth realm. Success is the fulfillment of God's original plan and purpose for your life here in the earth realm. That's what success is. Prosperity is having the divine ability to fulfill your assignment and then having a little change at the end of it. That's what prosperity is. And so Daniel vetoed it in the realm of the spirit. And then they said, we're going to have to put you in the lion's den. He said, no problem. Why did he say no problem? Because his mental superimposed itself over the animal kingdom. So when he walked in, he said, hey, <laughs> laid off, went to sleep. And as a result of that, the Bible said the entire legislation over Babylon was adjusted to accommodate his mission, to accommodate his mandate, to accommodate his vision, and to accommodate everything. Now, Daniel outranked all the kings in the realm of the spirit. And I'm going to prove it to you because everything in the universe works by rank and in order. Therefore, if there's going to be demonic warfare or satanic warfare against you, only the principalities that rank like you can touch you. The, the, see, most of the time we say that Satan is after you. You don't rank that high for Satan to bother you. There's only a few times that Satan is mentioned bothering people. Number one, Jesus, his ranking. Number two, Job, his ranking. Number three, Adam and Eve, their ranking. Very few times. Satan ain't after you because you don't rank that high in the realm of the spirit. What you're dealing with is just low, low level devils. Not high level, low levels. That if you knew your authority and you said, boo, they have to back up. <laughs> See, what, when I go into regions, I, there are certain things I don't have to pray about. I just establish it and I go to bed. That is it. I legislate it and I go to bed. That is it. When you rank high at that height, then you begin to have control over kingdoms, but kingdoms have systems. This is where the church comes into play. Now we could take a seat, I think. 
The church is here to affect and enforce the mandate pertaining to our kingdom. The church is the microcosm of the macrocosm. The church is a smaller unit of the bigger unit. That's why Jesus in his prayer, he said, when you pray, pray our Father which art in, hallowed be thy, thy kingdom, thy will be, where? No, it doesn't say on. See, the kingdom of heaven is within. And in order for the kingdom of heaven to be without, it has to first come within. Because spirits, I'm going to say it again, do not have legal right in the earth realm. That's why when Satan wanted access in the earth realm, he had to go through a man. That's why when God wanted legal access, not even God can come here. When God wanted legal access in the earth realm, he had to come through the womb of a woman. That's why angels say, what is man that thou art my... We don't get it. They think they walk out of order. They, they don't even love you. But why have you chosen man? God chose us because it gives him legal access in the earth realm. Spirits don't have legal access. That's what, let me tell you something. If you have disbodied spirits that show up, you don't even have to be afraid. That's like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Why? They cannot do anything to you except they do something through you. You got to understand. So it, w listen, when you go to regions and you, 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 you see wind blowing and all this bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, go to sleep. They can't do nothing to you, absolutely nothing, except they show up in a body. That is why the enemy fights deliverance. He don't mind you speaking in tongues, just don't get delivered. He fights deliverance. And see, that, that's what the fruit of the Spirit is, you know. The fruit of the Spirit is the characteristics of God. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is. And so either we're going to keep the characteristics of our old father, which is the devil, or the characteristics of our new father. That's why the Bible said that he is transforming us into the image of his dear son. We're going to be picking up his characteristics. That's why when John the Revelator goes into uh, another dimension, the 10th dimension, and he sees this revelation, and, and he starts worshiping. This is Revelation 19, verse 19, 10. He starts worshiping. And the guy says, get up. Are you crazy? He said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm one of your brethren. He said, I, I thought you were Jesus. No, I just look like him. Why? Because I've been conformed to its image. Everybody is going to look like Jesus. That's why as long as we're in the earth realm, we have to put on our spiritual armor. We put on our spiritual armor because God dresses in a spiritual armor. Jesus has a spiritual armor. So when we dress, we're in camouflage. And when we get up into those dimensions, the enemy doesn't know whether he's dealing with us or Jesus Christ himself. The only thing that betrays us is the words that come out of our mouth. That's the only thing that betrays. That's why the Bible said in Psalm 103, verses 19 to 22, that angels, angels now, angels respond to the voice of his word. Not to our word, but the voice of his word. They respond. They're empowered by it. The Bible said that when Daniel was in warfare, the angel said, we were empowered by your word. From the first day you started praying, we, God released the answers. But we had, some, we had some warfare in one of the heavens. And it was your prayer that empowered us. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 7 and 14 says, angels are our helps ministers. That means we could stand right here, right now. We could command angels to begin to take uh, anointings and deposit it. Hallelujah, in the back row. We could command angels to carry healing anointings. We can identify growth. And we could say to angelic beings, we cannot reach them but carry this anointing to the back. We can identify individuals that are way up in the nosebleed 
lead and angels actually carry anointings up there I can prove that here is Rhoda Rhoda was praying in an intercession Rhoda could not leave the house but Rhoda began to pray this is one of the secret weapons she was not recognized as an apostle but she outranked everybody in the prayer meeting the Bible said that when she began to pray there was an angel just left Rhoda and the angel went and identified where Peter was he oh and when he stood there the heavens were open the Bible said heaven touched down in the earth realm when the heavens touched down in the earth realm it created apostolic uh, hallelujah waves uh, and as the waves went through the earth realm everything began to accommodate uh, Peter's mantle the earth said how are we gonna lose him and then the earth said I know we'll create earth tremors the earth began to tremor and then it threw off the hinges then the angel said I'm here on assignment Peter began to rub his eye he said I've come to get you somebody's been interceding for you he took Peter by his hand led him to the prayer meeting here was Rhoda Rhoda had a release in prayer she got up from praying the whole church was still in intercession and what is happening with the church we don't know the spirit realm enough to know when we've had releases because we don't know nothing about protocol but Rhoda got up from the prayer meeting and said I had a release the Bible said there was a knock on the door by the way what you are looking for is at your door it's knocking what you've been looking for is looking for you what you want wants you what you need needs you all you have to do is intercede the Bible said when Peter shows up at the door she runs back with the announcement Peter has been released here is the prayer meeting the church people said he can be released because we ain't finished praying it is because they did not know how much authority they had whatever they were binding on earth our problem is our belief system doesn't align with what we're saying so Rhoda gets up she runs into the church and she says to the church listen Peter is at the door the church said it can be Peter it must be his angel what was they saying there are angelic beings in the realm of the spirit with your same DNA they look like you they act like you that's why when you get perversions there is a familiar spirit that's why the witch of Endor when she was summoning trying to summon the prophet the Bible said there was a spirit that imitated hallelujah the prophet if there is an imitation there is a real thing Paul said I speak not only in tongues of man but I speak in tongues of angels I legislate I have an ability to speak to angelic beings and tell them to go over there and they have to go over there ladies and gentlemen if you understand the power of prayer I can be here and change the climate in Africa I don't have to go to Africa why because of my words words have power words have presence words have prophetic implication with no geographical limitation if God said I'm created after his image and after his likeness something in me should be able to defy time I know I can't do it physically I can do it spiritually my words are spiritual the Bible indicates we don't look at the things which are seen we look into another dimension there is another dimension mention and the kingdoms of this world one day is going to be in the control not of legislators not of governments not of psychics but the church is about to come into their true identity the church is about to come into the true power the church is about to understand their mission to understand their mandate and to understand the mantle that is upon us we are God's official legislators here in the earth realm. We are God's defense system. We are God's tacticians. We are God's scientists. We are God's educators. We are God's politicians. We are God's arms. We are God's hands. We are God's faith. And when
when you see me, you have to see the God that's in me. The Bible said, when the church comes into its true power, the Gentiles shall bow and serve us. I'm here to announce to principalities and powers, get ready, because the real church is getting ready to shake kingdoms whatever we bind it's gonna be bound whatever we lose it's gonna be loose the church is the greatest power here in the earth realm that's the church the church is the greatest power we are not a religious institution we are not that's religion is the opiate of the masses Jesus was not a Christian. He was a kingdom ambassador. Paul said this about us. He said, we are ambassadors. We are all ambassadors. An ambassador is the highest represented official sent from one kingdom to another kingdom with one, one, one mandate. That is to advise the government that they are sent to of the mandate and the mission and the principles and policies of the kingdom from which they emanate. Let me tell you something. This is not the era of Mr. and Mrs. Nice Christian. This is the era of aggressive takeover. We want every system. We want all 12 systems. And the church has been commissioned by God to bring every system into divine alignment. And that's where you get into mentals. have um, several questions left but I don't know about y'all but I really can't take no more I, I, this is one tape that you need to play every day every day until you get it. This summit was called by God and as she began to move in the spirit you know this is this is this is women on the front line stuff. This ain't that baby stuff. This ain't that, that do you want to be saved. This is that stuff for you. Well, you go. Y'all really ain't seen nothing yet. Because this stuff right here that she just laid down. And I know now that I have authority in every kingdom except for the sovereign kingdom. But I also know now that the sovereign kingdom, that whatever I allow, he allows. And whatever I disallow, Let me do this. Let me do this. We just got to go home. We, 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 we can't do nothing else. We can't. We just, 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 just.
right now you know what I feel in here right this second there is tell me if I'm saying this right there is an open portal I feel I feel an open something in the atmosphere that I feel that we are in the atmosphere of the impossible and I feel in the spirit right now that if you would just take about 60 seconds and go to speaking it and disallowing some things and canceling some things just do it I mean I mean do it right now because because I feel something is getting ready to break with immediate results immediate results you point down you point down at everything that the devil has tried to do you point down and you disallow God I feel that in here tonight Come on, open your mouth. Put him under your feet. illegal suffering no more illegal attacks thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come on talk to him tell him you're illegal you have no right in the earth realm and I command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus I come in the authority of Jesus I come in the authority of Jesus I veto your assignment I superimpose everything that you have planted. I go inside of the womb of your satanic womb. I go in and I get it. I kill everything that you got hiding in the belly waiting to 
Shaya. I break your concentration. I break every force up. You magnified yourself in my direction. You concentrated on destroying me. But I veto that assignment. I cancel it out. And I release spiritual prosperity in this building. I release supernatural authority. seconds uh, as loud as you can uh, because the enemy needs to hear your voice uh, he needs to know uh, that you will not take up uh, not another second uh, of his abuse uh, he needs to know uh, that you will not take up uh, not another second uh, of his lies uh, shut his mouth uh, with your authority shut him down uh, with your praise uh, One minute of praise, one minute of praise shatters his teeth. One minute of praise shatters his teeth. One minute of praise, it shuts his mouth. One minute of praise, it annihilates him. One minute of praise, it vetoes him. One minute of praise, it kills his identity. It destroys his plan. Praise God. Shout! Shout out to the Lord! Shout out to the Lord! He reigns! Shout out to the Lord! He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah! Shout out to the Lord! He is El Shaddai! Hallelujah! 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 Come on, shout out to Him! I hear Him saying, Put me back on the throne. Put me back in authority. Put me back on the seat of your heart. Put me back. Give me back my place.
Would you raise your hands and towards heaven? When you raise your hands in this kind of atmosphere, it's a sign of authority. It's not just raising your hand to receive anything. Hands lifted up is a sign of authority. Now, Father, we proclaim right now in the name of Jesus that even as you have called us to this summit, we decree and declare every individual that you have summoned from the north, the south, the east and rest, that these women now are officially being sent out as ambassadors of the Most High God. We decree and declare that they are going out in rank and in order. We summon their angels to now begin to move at their bidding. We decree and declare that ignorance is now being replaced with the word of the Lord, with vision. We decree and declare that the spirit of prophecy is now upon each individual, which is, which is the testimony of Jesus. We decree and declare that the sevenfold manifestation of your anointing will be manifested in your life, in their life. That the spirit of wisdom and might and counsel and knowledge and understanding and reverential fear we decree and declare according to scripture that their feet are anointed and their hands are anointed that they are officially placed into your military I decree and declare that as they go forth in warfare they go forth with a fresh apostolic and prophetic mantle I decree and declare that new ministries are being birthed even as we stand father we go into the atmosphere we go into different dimensions we're saying Satanic wounds uh, are being hidden and large. Uh, we identify those wounds. Uh, we decree and declare uh, that the ten wounds of the spirit, uh, if there be any illegal pregnancy, uh, we decree and declare uh, divine abortions, uh, spontaneous abortions, uh, spontaneous miscarriages uh, occur right now. Uh, we perform uh, spiritual and prophetic DNCs uh, in the womb of the spirit. Uh, we decree and declare uh, every woman's womb, uh, the ten wounds uh, are being cleared. They're being sanctified. They're being purified. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare regulation. Hallelujah. In prophetic cycles, we decree and declare when the word of the Lord is set forth, it will find clean wounds. Hallelujah. Fresh wounds and prepare to receive the word of the Lord. I decree and declare every deaf ear is being open. You will begin to hear what the spirit is speaking to the church in the name of Jesus I command blind eyes to open I command dumb mouths to begin to speak I decree hallelujah in the name of Jesus hallelujah that the five-fold ministry giftings that you have gathered in this place they're being released we call the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, the pastors. We decree fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. New revelation. I decree a turnaround. I come against every weapon that the enemy has used against you. I decree and declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I decree right now, even as the anointing of God searches down and sinks down into the dimensions that you live in, I decree every part of your body, your mind and soul and spirit comes into divine alignment. I decree when you walk out of here, you walk out of here with a new anointing. Bless 
nations. I bless you according to the messianic anointing. I speak not only the messianic anointing, I decree the endemic anointing that comes upon you that God would allow you to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, to live healthy, and to be productive in Jesus' name. I speak the Isaac anointing that when you plant, you'll receive a hundredfold increase. I speak the summer make anointing for resource management. I speak the anointing of Jacob for technology. I speak the anointing of Deborah for governmental strategies and military strategies. I speak the anointing of Daniel, an anointing of aristocracy. I speak the anointing of Job. He'll give you witty ideas, creative inventions. I speak the Johannian anointing that you will move into new prophetic dimensions. I speak the Paulinian anointing and apostolic anointing that you will be able to take cities. I speak the Peturian anointing that you will give your life for your master. I decree kingdoms come into alignment. I decree systems come into alignment. I decree like a graviton, you are moving according to God's trajectory. I call heaven and earth to come alongside of you and support you and undergird you. I decree you are the head, not the tail. I decree you are above and not beneath. I decree you're blessed in your outgoing. You're blessed when you're coming. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. I bless you with national prominence. I bless you, the works of your hand, with productivity. I decree that the kingdom is no longer a mystery. And I send you forth into the 12 systems. And I say, go, baptize them in the name of the power. Son, the name of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name.
some of you are having supernatural experiences even right now. Just for the next 30 seconds, come on, release yourself one more time because there's some of you are experiencing a supernatural encounter right now. Just open your mouth up again and for the next 30 seconds, come on, without the music because the divine presence of God is in this place. Come on, I just believe if everybody in here just get on one accord, come on. Come on, y'all, let's not miss this, come on. Come on, let's press into him, come on. This is what you've been waiting on. Come on, push, come on, push. Come on, push, come on, push. Come on, I feel a whale coming up in the spirit. Come on, you gotta whale this out. Come on, I feel it coming up in the spirit. Come on, open up your mouth, you gotta let it out. Come on, this is the Holy Spirit wanting to work through you.
Come on, reach up, reach up, reach up, reach up all over the building. Reach up, 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 reach up. Reach up, reach up, reach up and open up, reach up and open up, reach up and open up. Sign is calling to a higher place. Sign is calling to a higher place. That's what that note says. Zion is calling to a higher place. Zion. The clarion call from Zion. Zion is calling to a higher place. Zion.
We attempt to leave this place. As we attempt to leave this building. 